G'day, I'm Matthew Cutler-Welsh from Homestyle Green. Today I want to talk about the thermal envelope. What exactly is a thermal envelope? It's not one of these, that's an envelope. It's one of these. And every single house has a thermal envelope and all that is, is the line or the boundary between the inside living space and the outside environment. So a, key, a few key th things about the, um, the thermal envelope, um, a few places where it's not. Generally, um, if we have a garage here, that's a car by the way, we don't usually consider that as the part of the thermal envelope, and for good reason, cars don't deserve to be kept warm. So the thermal envelope is the boundary, as I said, between the living space that we want to keep, the, or, or often called the condition space, and the outside. So it's the depends on the particular design of the house where that line might be. Now, in a lot of cases um, here in New Zealand, we put ceiling insulation and the ceiling up here. Um, typically, unfortunately, our houses are not insulated on the walls. However, we still refer to that as the thermal envelope because that's kind of the, the outside bit that protects us from uh, the direct elements. And then there's, of course, the ground. So this square here, very simply, is our thermal envelope. Now ideally in a new home that would be fully insulated all the way around. And as I heard one, someone say yesterday, um, it was quite a good analogy about plumbers. Plumbers don't fix pipes, they don't worry about pipes, they worry about the joins. And that's the same with the thermal envelope. It's where the joins are that are the really important bits to get right. Because it's pretty easy to lay insulation across here, it's very hard to lay insulate or to get insulation connected in these places here because there's a whole bunch of timber in the way, there's some, some joints, there's um, plasterboard that's got to match up and quite often the insulation layer does not actually meet um, around these places and that leads to what we call a thermal break and thermal breaks are evil because that's where heat can escape and we've talked about uh, foundation walls before but we often have thermal breaks uh, up in these corners as well. So that's conductive heat loss through those thermal breaks but other holes in that thermal envelope are equally or if not even more important. One of the most common places we like to stick holes in our thermal envelope in quite a few houses it's um, a lot of holes up to 40-50 I've seen um, are for lighting and that causes a huge amount of heat loss up through all these holes and particularly when we consider the fact that we have to pull back the insulation here um, because it's a unless there's special lights it's a fire hazard to have that insulation touching uh, those lights so we actually start degrading our thermal envelope quite significantly but then of course we need to get into our house so um, we have things like doors um, and we'll have windows and all these things start to impact the integrity of our thermal envelope and that's why things like good double glazing with good frames uh, sensible lighting and um, also fixing the detail around those frames and how they're actually connected to the walls become very very important if you want to have an efficient home we'll go into that in more detail uh, talking about those individual aspects, but for today, for today I just wanted to quickly talk about what the thermal envelope is. If you hear that term, uh, the thermal envelope is your friend and it needs to be considered very, very carefully in the detail of a design for a warm and healthy home. I'm Matthew Cutler-Welsh. Join me again next time on homestylegreen.com.